Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today in uh, News and Gaming, we have Police, Walmart, and Google Fiber is apparently back. Sort of. We'll get to that right after the jump. Hey everyone, sorry I missed last week. I ended up on calls all weekend with uh, my regular 9 to 5, so various little issues. But we're back this week and we're just going to dive right into it. So first up we have the police. They are buying access to hacked website data. So some companies are selling government agencies access to stolen data from websites in the hope that it will provide investigative leads. One such company is called SpyCloud and they're just they're doing just that. They are selling hacked website data to government agencies. Now, there's two problems I have with that. Uh, the first one being that most hacked data has nothing to do with the criminals themselves. Most of the people in the data are the victims. So, I don't understand why they would need access to victim data. The other problem I have is, technically they're buying stolen goods. It's, it's stolen data. I thought that was illegal. I, I could be wrong. At least in the US, I could be wrong. The last I checked is stolen, you know, what is it? Uh, possession is nine tenths of the law kind of thing. So, yeah, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But the really nasty part is what this does is it gives police agencies or, or law enforcement agencies, excuse me. Uh, so this could include FBI, for example, agency to basically bypass regulations and warrants to get said information it makes it so they don't have to go through the legal process at all and now all of a sudden they could potentially have your data which they probably already have most of anyways but I mean to be fair but now they're just going to be getting it from you, you know for example the uh, Wawa hack that ha that happened uh, last year for example, they could end up with even more of your information or the target hack that happened oh, a, few, a couple years ago. But as the data is showing up, they're, this company is kind of consolidating it and selling it to law enforcement agencies. I really don't agree with this. This is ridiculous. It just provides another way for them to try to prove you guilty without giving you the chance to prove innocence. It, you are guilty now instead of innocent until proven guilty. You are guilty until proven innocent. That was never the premise. And keeping on with law enforcement, uh, cops, police officers in Germany sees a server that hosted blue leaks by uh, DDO Secrets. So, on Tuesday, Emma Best, the founder of Distributed Denial of Secrets, or DDO Secrets, a WikiLeaks-like website has published that the police data that prosecutors in the German town of... I looked this up how to pronounce it. Zwickau. Sees the organization's uh, primary public download server. That's all it was. It was just a, a public download server. That All it was was just the main data from BlueLeaks. It wasn't any of the sources or the material. Uh, or how it was obtained and according to best the server was only used to distribute data to the public it had no contact with sources and was involved in nothing more than enlightening the public through journalistic publishing but they ended up seizing it and they were it they actually said uh, DDO secrets said that uh, and I'm probably probably retouching that wrong that might be DDoS secrets I don't know uh, that they were already looking to upgrade their stuff anyway, so this actually kind of proved to be a uh, blessing and a curse kind of thing. So, we'll see. Uh, if they continue to do so, great. If not, someone else will pick up the duties, I'm sure. And moving on from uh, police officers and law enforcement, we're going on to Amazon now. They are now going to require that third-party sellers disclose their names and addresses. Now, this re disclosure is already required in Europe, Japan, and Mexico. 
And they're saying they're doing this to ensure there is a consistent baseline of seller information to help customers make informed shopping decisions. Basically, they're doing it to try and help get rid of the various um, price hike and scamming uh, stuff that's going on on their site. You know, people selling, for example, masks during the pandemic for, you know, $60 a mask, not a pack, a single mask. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how well it'll work. Uh, and like I said, this is already required in a couple other countries. It may help. Uh, and I don't know if it's they would require, like, the personal information, like, the name of the individual. Like, if they were doing it from... Like, if I was doing it through Spectral Tech, uh, if they would need my name and work address or if they just need the company's name and work address. I, they didn't really go into that very well. But we'll see if it works or not. Um, I'm not sure how much help it will provide for getting rid of those scalpers. So, we'll see. And continuing on with Amazon and Walmart. Walmart is going to be launching their competition subscription plan member plan to Amazon called Walmart Plus. It's actually going to end up being a little cheaper than Amazon Plus at $98 a year and includes same day delivery of groceries, fuel discounts and various other perks. Um, they did not say whether or not it was going to launch nationally or if it was going to be a region by region, but it's supposed to start later this month and just never specified and they have no comment on when it will start or how it will start so and they're also coming out with a Walmart plus branded credit card to be introduced uh, at some point after the launch yeah this is just what people need another credit card another form really we don't need this kind of thing now providing competition to Amazon plus or yeah Amazon Prime not plus Amazon Prime cool the fact that it's Walmart, uh, it kind of bugs me a little bit. It's Walmart. I've never really liked Walmart, honestly. I do end up having to shop there periodically because it's literally the closest and sometimes the cheapest place to get stuff. But their methodologies, I've never, I've never really agreed it, and I avoid it when I can. So, I mean, if you're willing to, you know subscribe to Walmart Plus when it comes out. Let me know in the description down below. You know, and if you do end up get, uh, subscribing to it, uh, you know, let us know how it works. Or, uh, but, you know, what the actual, some of the other benefits are. And they did, they did also say that there might be some benefits with movie stuff, or, you know, uh, streaming, something like that. And if you don't know, they own Vudu. So I would presume there's going to be some way to, under the Walmart Plus membership to probably have things like, you know, where you have free movies and shows under Prime membership, they'll probably do the same thing under Vudu. I would presume. Um, they didn't specify, but it's kind of an educated guess since they own Vudu. Now, admittedly, Walmart is about 15 years behind Amazon in terms of uh, a loyalty slash membership program. And in those 15 years, Amazon has managed to garner 150 million members globally. So Walmart's got some catching up to do if they want to really compete with Amazon. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I have no plans on getting Walmart Plus. Uh, I know some people that might. And I know one person, at least one person in, in my immediate circle, that would have a very... Uh, probably a vulgar opinion of it, but we'll leave it at that. And moving on to kind of what I was describing, what should have been done with internet to begin with and kind of telecoms in general, but a city is building an open access broadband network with Google Fiber as its first ISP. So West Des Moines is going to build fiber conduits citywide and let multiple ISPs offer service. Basically, this is like the city's built the road, but FedEx and UPS can travel down the road and you can get deliveries from FedEx or UPS or USPS or whoever. It's not 
only FedEx can travel down that road or only UPS, which is what the telecom industry has been, is only Verizon Fios or only Charter, which is horrible, or only uh, Atlantic Broadband, whoever. Now it's going to be, here's the fiber line, who's going to be our providers? Now it does, I like this because it means anyone can travel over the fiber line. I, I could get my ISP through Google, I could get it through, depending on who they go with, uh, potentially Verizon or many others. But the main fiber backbone and to the houses would be provided by the city. And if you're going to end up digging roads anyways, might as well just lay the fiber line with it. I mean, it, to me, that makes sense. That way, you know, like even in neighborhoods like mine, when there, there should be paving soon, I hope, man, I'm tired of living on a dirt road. They should run, I mean, we already have uh, Atlantic Broadband, which honestly is horrible, but if the city's providing the lines, well, then I could go with anyone. And having that option, that choice, is where you would get the competition on who's providing the best stuff. And we might actually stop getting this whole, oh, well, you're over your data cap. Well, they're not providing, they're not, you know, this company B over here doesn't have data caps. So I'm going to cancel my subscription with you and go with them. It would make good competition in ISPs because right now there's literally none in the U.S. Now what I find funny about this is that it's Google Fiber being the first one in there because Google Fiber basically paused their plans to expand in new cities in uh, October 2016 because of various lawsuits filed by incumbent ISPs and construction problems that eventually led to the Alphabet-owned ISP's complete exit from Louisville, Kentucky. They were basically, the incumbent ISPs, basically the ones that were already there, uh, I think one of them was, uh, not Charter, uh, Comcast? Maybe Cox Cable. One of them. I think it was Comcast. Uh, they basically were pissed off that Google was going to provide fiber service, synchronous, up and down, cheaper than what they were providing for, you know, crappy, maybe 100 meg down, 20 up kind of thing. They were pissed, and they were going to lose money. Um, boo hoo. This is why there should be competition in this area. So, I really hope this kind of thing, uh, you know, it starts to go more widespread into other cities going, maybe we could start doing that. Because what the city's doing is they're charging Google for access to the lines. So the city's going to end up making money from them. This is great, and if you want to come in, I'm pretty sure you'd end up having to pay to the city for access to the fiber trunk. This would provide money for the cities. I doubt they would reduce taxes because of it, but you know how that is. But it could potentially lead to that. One could hope. And moving on to gaming news. Tencent, a company I'm sure we all love, is opening a new studio in California called Lightspeed LA. And this will be based in Orange County and led by Rockstar vet Steve Martin. Really not sure how I feel about this because Tencent has not exactly been on everyone's good list. I mean, they're not known for being... They're basically a Chinese... They're not a Chinese-owned company. They're based out of China, but they have a tendency to kowtow to the Chinese government, of course. I mean... And as a matter of fact, they have a cyberpunk game coming out called uh, Code Sin, which looks like a very blatant ripoff of uh, CD Projekt Red's Cyberpunk 2077. We'll see how that goes, but their, their plan is to work on a AAA console game for the PS5 and the Series X. Sure, um, I doubt I'll end up playing it. Uh, it's... Let's just say they've been known to have... Um, they copy the homework. And they really don't care whether or not they do. So and That's been part of this whole trade war with China that we have is that they don't respect IPs. 
as in like intellectual properties. How well are they going to do there? Who knows? We'll see. Are people going to buy the game? Probably. Not realizing it's made by Tencent, but uh, like I said, we'll see. And maybe a bit of sad news for some people. Uh, the Microsoft, the Microsoft, well, Microsoft discontinues the Xbox One and the Xbox One, excuse me, the Xbox One X and the Xbox One S Digital Edition in preparation for the Series X launch. Uh, the, the One S, the plain One S, will continue to be manufactured. However, the One X and the One S Digital Edition, they are going to stop manufacturing. This is part of the natural cycle of moving to a new console in that they are you know, trying to get their resources up to launch the new Series X and what looks like it's potentially going to be named the Series S. We'll see. It's supposed to be low power, targeted towards 1080, 1440, whereas the Series X is targeted towards uh, 4K. Um, this should kind of be expected. I think what their lineup is going to be is basically they'll have the Series X for 4K, the Series S for the 1440, 1080, and the, the One S for the 1080 and 720 lineup. And I don't know how long they're going to support the One S version or when they'll stop manufacturing that. There's been no indication. So that may stick around for another couple years as the baseline Xbox. Unless they come up with a series version that takes over for that one. Who knows? We'll see. Um, that may be what the Series S is going to be and when the Series S is finalized. And this is a, a guess on the name, but once that version is finalized, they may stop the One S. Uh, production on the One S. Who knows? Uh, we'll see. And on the last part, moving on to free games this week. Uh, we actually have a bit of an update. Finally, PS Plus has uh, added some new games. So for PS Plus, we have Rise of the Tomb Raider. Tomb. Rise of the Tomb Raider. NBA uh, 2K20 and Erica. I have no idea on that one. Live Gold, we have Juju, Dunk Lords, Saints Road 2, and WRC 8 FIA World Rally Championship. And from Epic Games, we have Torchlight, Torchlight 2 and Sludge Life. And that's it for the free games that have you know been updated. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit the like button, subscribe. Uh, hit the noti noti the, the notification bell so you get notified when we release new videos. And keep an eye out for a video I'm doing for uh, setting up a Untangle VM on your Unraid NAS. I've just recently done that just to consolidate some of my power usage in here. Until next time, guys, take it easy.